So I was very happy to have uh, worked uh, on the Pandora Papers. Uh, I'm a senior editor at uh, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, um, ICIJ. It's a Washington-based news organization that uh, partners with uh, news organizations around the world to heighten the impact of, uh, of, its, uh, of its projects. And the Pandora Papers was a very special project. Um, we call it, and it was, the biggest journalism collaboration in history. It was the biggest leak of its kind of offshore financial documents. It's uh, uh, 2.94 terabytes, whatever those are, but that's a, a pretty big number in the data world. Uh, 11.9 million documents from 14 so-called offshore service providers. These are the firms that are based in Singapore and Panama and um, the British Virgin Island, Islands and uh, elsewhere, other tax havens that are the place you go to if you're a, a, wel a wealthy uh, elite or a uh, multinational corporation in order to, to create a, an offshore company, shell company often. Um, the leaks uh, included emails between clients, spreadsheets, uh, uh, tax forms, uh, contracts, uh, an array of documents, audio-visual files. Um, it contained, uh, what, what was special about this one was it, uh, whereas previous leaks, the Panama Papers, uh, Paradise Papers, Offshore Leaks, uh, Swiss Leaks, Lux Leaks, all of those were, um, were in effect uh, chipping away at the uh, uh, wall of offshore secrecy. With Pandora Papers, we kind of blew it apart. <laughs> and you can see the offshore system and it's all its, uh, its uh, breadth, uh, ubiquity, and, um, and, uh, and predominance in, uh, in, in, our, in our world. Um, we found, uh, not a handful, but 330 uh, uh, senior public officials in this in these documents, we found uh, forty six Russian oligarchs just just the, alone in the documents. One hundred and thirty billionaires. Uh, it shows really uh, separate and parallel uh, extra legal uh, financial system available only to the to the wealthy and powerful. And the reason this matters is there's basically two reasons to. Um, for the offshore system. One is tax avoidance, the other is secrecy. Um, tax avoidance is all about uh, creating a fictional presence in a low tax jurisdiction for yourself, opening a bank account and pretending that your money is there, <laughs> pretending you made your money there. And it has no um, social benefit. And in fact, it, it drains trillions of dollars from uh, public treasuries around the world. Secrecy uh, is even a worse problem because um, it allows uh, wealthy uh, individuals and uh, corrupt oligarchs and drug dealers and terrorists to hide their wealth and from 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 all legitimate authorities anywhere. So you put those two things together, and you've got a uh, a, a system that creates all sorts of uh, follow-on social ills, um, drain treasuries. Um, um, public corruption on a scale that we literally could not imagine without uh, the offshore system. Literally impossible to be a oh, Russian oligarch, let's just say, and keep your money in Russia. It's impossible. You have to move it out and you have to keep it secret and you would not be able to, to do that without, without the, um, the benefit of the system. So the reason this is important now um, uh, this particular moment. One, uh, one, on one hand, it's a important moment for journalism. Uh, the, uh, the fact that 150 news organizations around the world and 600 journalists uh, could collaborate and on a project that went so smoothly, I think is, um, well, it's, it's a, uh, um, I have to say it. It does. Uh, it does. It does. It does say something about uh, ICIJ's ability to organize and, and uh, manage a project this scale. I think it also is uh, shows that the model works. Uh, it uh, it does. Uh, it does um, uh, elevate the impact of of any any project. It, this data was so much more than any one news organization could handle. We had. Uh, uh, 
the Guardian with us, the BBC, the Washington Post was a uh, super valuable partner. Uh, but you know, organizations uh, uh, from from Turkey to to Panama to uh, to Pakistan and uh, all, everywhere, basically at all corners of the globe, participated and and really elevated the impact of this of this project in individual countries and globally. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that from on, on a policy level, I think it's um, it's easy to get discouraged um, in general, but certainly certainly if you're um, if you're looking for um, uh, looking at the the policy struggles to to get um, control of the offshore system but in fact you know in, in fact it's important to remember that um, that the reason the Pandora Papers is came at such a critical moment is in fact that this is a, a, a moment where um, where the, the problem of the offshore system and all the ills that it creates is is a very high on the, on the global po policy agenda um, the US has passed um, a, really landmark um, in the wake of the Panama Papers in particular, passed a landmark uh, law called the Corporate Transparency Act this year in uh, 2021 um, that will require um, uh, owners of shell companies to disclose who the actual owners are to, to, to authorities. That's a, a major blow to offshore secrecy and the developed nations, the OECD, have um, on the tax front have have essentially agreed to impose a minimum uh, tax on uh, multinational profits that are going to go a long way to mitigating the the, the 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 tax drain that results from from the offshore secrecy, this jurisdiction shopping that multinational corporations do. So this is a very interesting moment um, in the history, both of journalism and and the financial system. Um, it's obviously not um, clear which way anything's going to go. Uh, the, the offshore system essentially, when you think of it, is essentially it's a, it's a, a financial system backed by uh, the financial industry, uh, London, New York, Frankfurt. So it's not going to be easy to, uh, to take it on. But uh, as I say, the, the, the public is uh, now fully engaged in this topic and um, as I, I like to say that um, democracy's most um, or least appreciated uh, strength is its ability to reform itself um, and you can't reform what you can't see but now I think we've allowed the world to see the uh, offshore system in its uh, full scale and scope and breadth and ubiquity and and uh, and now I think the public has uh, the information it needs to to, to decide how to move forward.